Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our uh, third school year of our College Bound Foundation Train the Trainer events. Uh, we're kicking off this year based on uh, popular topics with scholarships. Uh, we sent out a survey and overwhelmingly, most people asked for more information about funding. So we heard what you had to say. And as you know, these are our opportunities to gather with our other community-based organizations, our like-minded individuals that are game changers in the lives of students. So today we have um, Joan Duchess Friedson. She works for the Jack Kent Cook Foundation. She is um, she joined Jack Kent Cook about 2021. However, she has spent a number of um, hours, days, weeks, months, years. Uh, working with the students and parents as a parent liaison for Loudoun County. She did that for over 10 years, and we're so lucky to have her here with us today. Uh, she's a graduate from SUNY. Right now, she's living in Virginia, so she's probably uh, happy it's a bit warmer in Virginia than it is in New York. <laughs> she's shaking her head yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to go on mute and uh, let Joan tell you about the Jack Kent Cook uh, Foundation Scholarships. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna get you guys engaged here and see if we can't um, have you guys let us know who's in the room and what you know. We're going to go ahead and um, launch a quick poll here. Mm -hmm. And we have a question on the table. The Jack Kent Cook Foundation funds, what do you guys think? Middle school only, current college students, transfer students, high school students, none of the above or all of the above. We'll give you about 20 more seconds. About five more seconds and then Good, we got seven out of 10 participants. Couple more, any thoughts? And hopefully you'll have the answer by the end of Joan's presentation. All right, so about 75% of y'all said all of the above. Quarter of you all, 25% said high school students only. So I am going to don't let you take it away. Great, thank you so much for having me. Um, so the answer to that question um, is not all of the above. We actually have three different scholarships. One is for um, seventh graders, rising eighth graders to apply. That's the Young Scholars Program, which is the first one I'll talk about. We have one for high school seniors. And then our third one is for community college students who are transferring to a four-year um, university or institution. So we do not have any scholarships for current four-year college students. So that's that was the trick right there in that question. So to talk a little bit about the foundation, we were started in uh, 2000 and we um, support high achieving um, students who um, have financial unmet financial needs. So to talk first about our Young Scholars Program, um, that is for students who are currently in seventh grade. When the application opens February 8th of 2024, they must be seventh grade students. And um, the scholarship actually starts in their eighth grade year and it allows for them to help get help with a dean of scholarships or an educational advisor to work through which is a rigorous high school program for them and um, other opportunities for them before they start high school. <clears throat> so um, here it talks a little bit, obviously the, the scholarship is financial support, um, personalized advising, but also there's a scholarship community and that includes some summer programming, opportunities for internships, study abroad, and leadership training. 
So the educational advisor, so each app scholar has an educational advisor. And as I said, it, it helps them identify an appropriately rigorous high school, um, engages them in the four-year academic planning for high school goal setting, helping them look towards, high, uh, towards college. You know, a lot of our students are first-generation college students. So having that extra support while they're looking towards applying to, scholar, uh, applying to colleges and what that's all about is really um, help, helpful. And then it's also year-round um, community programming. So we have different virtual hangouts online, attendance at um, Cook-sponsored summer programs, and that gives them an opportunity to connect with each other, see what other students are learning, and some very specific um, opportunities for them to, to get together and find out more about what it's like to be a Cook Scholar, some college visits there, they have the opportunity for college visits during their high school years to get a sense of schools. Um, and all of that done is done, of course, with a um, parent chaperone with them. So they're, so we provide the funding for them and their parents to do this travel. We, we provide that funding as well. Um, so talking a little bit about this, you know, a lot of a lot of folks have questions about like, what does this scholarship actually cover for young scholars? Because you know, if you're going to a public high school and um, you don't have any need for funding for your school, well, what does it cover? It covers online programs, music and art lessons, online courses, technology, the students get a laptop. Um, if they need a graphing calculator, we pay for that as well. Um, other opportunities, conferences, competitions, things that they might not be able to financially afford, um, we can help provide that for them, as well as internships. So if, you know, as the student gets older, the, um, they would need to have a, um, you know, paid job during the summer, um, we can help them with some um, stipends for the summer so that they can spend their time at an internship, which is typically unpaid. Um, we, these are three events that we have each year for our young scholars, our welcome weekend, that is for a four day residential experience for each young scholar. So that's when they first become young scholars, they attend that program. And it's a fun, you know, all, all of the events we try to, to have fun. It's educational, it's uplifting and it's fun. And it gives them an opportunity to meet other young scholars, to have more time with their educational advisor and just see what it feels like to be a scholar and in the scholarship community. First summer is a residential summer experience to bond as a cohort. So these students, um, you know, a cohort, like right now there is a cohort that is now all applying for co the college scholarship. So, you know, they've known each other since eighth grade and now they're all going to be applying for the college scholarship. And so they've created this bond together um, of the cohort to it, it, through this first summer, uh, summer program, including learning valuable leadership, high school preparation skills and all that. And it all takes place on a college campus, which is very cool. And then we have the Senior summer Summit, which is a residential summer experience focused on college search, application process, financial aid, um, and all of those details. So it allows for um, them to have that experience as well. So the scholarship is $55,000 up to $55,000 per, per year for up to four years. These are the eligibility requirements. So they currently need to be seventh grade students and entering eighth grade in the fall. So if you have a sixth grade student who is skipping seventh grade and entering eighth grade in the fall, they would be eligible. If you have um, a seventh grade student who is skipping eighth grade and starting ninth grade in the fall, they would not be eligible. So it has to be both of those things. Um, since the beginning of their sixth grade, they have to have earned all or mostly A's in core academic subjects. Uh, they must be residing currently in the U.S. or a U.S. territory and plan to attend high school in the U.S. They do not have to be documented. They do not have to have any documentation. They do not have to be a U.S. citizen. They just need to be currently residing in the U.S. and planning to attend high school in the U.S. And then they have to demonstrate an unmet financial need with a maximum AGI or adjusted gross income of $95,000. And that's for all of our scholarships. That's the same figure for all of our scholarships. $95,000 is the income limit. 
And that it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter how many people are in your family. That's the number for, for everybody. So the selection criteria, um, academic achievement is weighed most heavily. Um, we look at the classes, the grades that they've taken in those classes, um, enthusiasm for learning, higher level thinking, teacher recommendations. Leadership is, so academic achievement is about 40%. Um, leadership and persistence takes up the rest of it. Um, initiative, community involvement, service to others. So that leadership component can also be leadership in the home. Um, it doesn't have to be in the community or in school. You can, that can um, also be leadership at home. And then persistence, goal setting, response to challenges. Um, something in terms of persistence, if you are helping um, you know, your student with their application is we don't necessarily need to know in the writing section what issues they had faced. The, the, excuse me, let me phrase that again. <laughs> so we, we, we'd like to know them to focus more on how any issues that they have faced have changed the way that they are moving forward. So that's where the, the persistence piece falls in. So it's not necessarily about a hardship or a situation that they might have faced, but what changes have they made due to that? Um, and then the application. So for the young scholars, we host the application on our website. So that's different than the other two scholarships. So when scholarship opens, um, they'll go to our website, it'll say apply now, and they'll click that and their application will start on our website. Um, things that they need to think about prior to the application starting, we ask about student information, parent information, we want to see their report cards from sixth to seventh grade, uh, we need two teacher recommendations, we want to hear about their activities, honors and awards, there's three short essay responses, so that's about 125 words each. And then self-reported adjusted gross income for the last three tax years. So, um, you know, if you know that a student is going to be applying, I would say start looking, ask the family to start looking at the information sooner rather than later, because sometimes that sort of stops up the process. If the parents um, don't live in, don't live in the United States or haven't been in the United States for the past three years, we can take um, or haven't filed taxes for whatever reason an estimate of the adjusted gross income is fine. We don't at the time of the application ask for any sort of documentation about that. Later on in the review process, we will ask for tax information. And if they don't have tax information, we would ask for um, bank statements or pay stubs for that information. Uh, so these are ways to stay connected. Um, and I can put in the chat later in the presentation a way to be notified about our scholarships. We also have a counselor newsletter um, that might be appropriate for, for you folks to find out more about each of our scholarships. So that is something I put together on a monthly basis. It's short and sweet. It basically bullets the three scholarships and what the updated information is about them. So um, I'll put that in the chat at some point during the presentations. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second and um, see if there's any questions about the Young Scholars before I move on to our next scholarship. So I know you mentioned, good morning. I know you mentioned um, two teachers. Would it be, and it has to be teachers only, like not counselors or um, any other school staff, it has to be teachers? Yeah, so the reason we ask for teachers and we prefer, prefer um, core teachers is because, core subject teachers, is because the academics are weighed so heavily in the application process. And so we want to know that, the, you know, the student is excited about learning, is engaged, and so that takes up a whole lot of the application. Good morning. Is there a maximum number of, of, of scholars uh, that receive the scholarship annually? Is there... Yeah, that's a great question. So we do have um, a number that of, of students, it, it changes. So it's not the same number every year. Um, I believe last year there was 40 young scholars. The year before there was 45 young scholars. So it just depends year to year. But I would say between 40 and 60 um, young scholars per year. 
That's good. That's a nice cohort because sometimes you see these opportunities and then you later find out, you know, there's seven national winners, right? And yeah. so you feel a little disillusioned. So this is good to know that they, they have, like you said, a cohort that all kind of bonds together and have that same kind of shared experience. Um, I heard you mention they um, do a summer portion on a college campus. Does that campus change every year or? Yeah, it does. Um, last year it was in Chicago, I believe. Um, but yeah, it changes every year. Okay, great. Any other questions before we move on to the next scholarship in their uh, portfolio? Oh, I think we have a question from Lene in the chat. Uh, let's see, the question is, will the application be cut off after a set number of applications have been received? No, we have a deadline. So um, the scholarship deadline for young scholars is I think May 11th. So any scholarships that are um, received during that scholarship time will be reviewed if they're eligible. Okay, so that's a good question. And um, I'll have you know that for our college scholarship program, um, we had a different placement on the Common App and therefore received hundreds more scholarships this year than we have in the past um, for our college scholarships. So that- um, Joan, that question may have come to you just directly. I don't see it in the chat. Can you just repeat the question for us and then- Oh, no, I was just um, responding to the question about the young scholars. Oh, gotcha. Um, we mm -hmm. stop any, yeah, if we stop at any point, um, and just commenting that in the college scholarship this year, we actually had um, several hundred more than we have in the past, um, but we haven't stopped <laughs> taking them. The application <laughs> just closed. So we have stopped now, but um, that was open until November 17th. Okay. So talking, transitioning gears to the college scholarship. So this is a a scholarship for students who are graduating from high school um, in spring 2024 and enrolling in a four-year institution in fall of 2024. They have a cumulative unweighted GPA of 3.5 or, or above and that maximum family adjusted gross income of $95,000. So unfortunately, our scholarship for this year just closed November 16th, but um, for next year, any seniors that you know that will be seniors next year, um, that will open, it typically opens in August. So students have an opportunity to get started in August and we highly recommend them not wait until the last minute because counselors are required to provide a school report and a transcript and a letter of recommendation plus two teacher letters of recommendation. So if students don't submit until the 16th, then it's hard to get all of those um, items it, by the deadline. So our selection um, criteria is the same for the college scholarship. Um, the academic achievement is taken at 40% and leadership and persistence and unmet financial need are the other components. And, you know, very similar here, leadership, also an opportunity to talk about family leadership in that spot. And, um, you know, to, to continue with the persistence of just you're talking more about how any challenges might have changed the student. So the program experience is a little bit different for the college scholarship. Um, again, they also have personalized advising. So that's the same for all three scholarships. And that's what makes our scholarship so unique is the opportunity for that personalized advising, helping students with the college transition, navigating resources. Um, we also do provide them um, college scholarship, college scholars, as well with a laptop and any other um, tech that they might need. Um, and the financial support is up to 55,000 per year for four years. Now we are um, a scholarship. We ask the students to fill out their FAFSA um, and take on any, any um, opportunities for finances that they receive. The idea is for them to graduate from their four-year institution without any debt debt-free. So um, ours is final dollars scholarship. So it comes in after any sort of financial aid and things like that. 
Um, again, with the internship support, we can provide an internship stipend if a student needs to spend their, would like to spend their summer at a free, a, you know, an unpaid internship versus um, having, getting income by working over the summer, we can provide them with an internship um, stipend. And then continuing with the Cook community. So we have Scholars Weekend. It's usually the first weekend in August um, that all new scholars attend, some alumni scholars attend. And it's a great opportunity for them to meet their cohort. It's both the college scholarships as well as undergraduate transfer scholarships. So, you know, you might find another student who's going to your same school that's a Cook Scholar. So, and then it's an opportunity to meet their educational advisors, other students, and just engage with the community, learn more about the college process. Um, and, you know, the Cook alumni, they they go on to do great things and they have opportunities to bring other students with them. So it's it's a really great community. And then these students are also eligible for our graduate scholarship, which is up to $150,000. So that is not a public scholarship that is only for Cook Scholars. So you can only apply if you're a Cook Scholar to that graduate trans, um, scholarship. So again, it's already closed for this year, um, but our uh, our application for the college scholarship is on Common App. So as soon as Common App opens in August, typically August 1st, students can start their Common application. And when our scholarship opens later in the month, then they can continue on to do our scholarship. So students would add the Jack Kent Cook Foundation College Scholarship as one of their colleges. So, um, and then that's how they will receive um, access to the application. So something to note is if a student is applying to 20 colleges, they will not have space on their Common App to apply to our scholarship. So, um, you know, they need to, to be aware of that. Common App doesn't allow them to go above that 20. Um, so the application components are very similar to the Young Scholars. We ask for personal and household information, high school transcript. We want to hear about extracurricular activities. Uh, we want two core teacher recommendations from 11th grade. So that is um, a little bit different than the Young Scholars, but we want them to both be from 11th grade. And then three short written um, response questions. So similar again, and they have um, also about 125 um, words to those as well. And then again, the family financial information. Um, we just asked them to estimate their... Um, either find it on their taxes or if they don't if they don't file taxes, take an estimate of what their um, adjusted gross income was from the last three years. And if it's over, this happened especially during COVID, not so much right now, but if it's over 95,000 for, for whatever reason, for one year out of the three, they may still, um, so that's something to consider. But if it's two years, they're above 95,000, then they would not be eligible. But that happened a lot with COVID, people working overtime and things like that. Um, so takeaways, again, the application is closed. Um, if you know anybody who applied, we've started the re review process on Friday and um, we're hoping to let the semifinalists know in the winter. And then <clears throat> students will be notified probably in April whether or not they become scholars. And then their first event is the um, Scholars Weekend, the first weekend in August, where they get to meet their educational advisors, and it's super fun. There's a talent show and um, sort of like a big group um, event for almost, I wouldn't say it was an escape room, but escape room-esque. <laughs> so um, they had that opportunity. So does anybody have questions about the college scholarship? Yes, Ms. Winslow Morris, I think I see your hand up. Yes, ma'am. I um, my question is for this scholar: How many scholars are selected out of your pool? Sure. So it's um, it again, it varies. Um, two years ago we had a hundred. Last year I think we had um sixty. So it's it's again probably it's a little bit more than the young scholars. Um, the young scholars hovers more around forty, and this um college scholarship hovers more around sixty. And are all of those scholarships the fifty five thousand or more, or it, that's just the maximum they could go? That's the maximum they can go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Have a question. Go ahead. 
Are your scholar? I know you mentioned that this year because it was on the Common App, you got hundreds of of more than we would normally get. Does that mean that all of your applications are read by human readers, or are you using AI to help sift that down? Yeah, so we're um, reading by human readers. We um, hire readers to read in um, pairs, partnerships. So they read um, 60 applications, a pair of readers, and then they'll meet and discuss the applicants and see who they're going to push forward to the second round. Then we have um, a second round group of readers that will do the same thing. Um, so yes, humans are reading them. And I guess I had a follow up question, um, just because I know the population we're working with, sometimes information is hard to get articulated to our parents if they're not in the same household. And you said family income. So mm -hmm. how does that work if you have a father or a mother who's not inside the home, you're not with your primary parent? What are you actually looking at? That's a great question. Thanks for asking that. So we want to know the income of um, for the for the students' parents. So if um, if they have custody, so if they don't if they don't have if they don't have custody if they're living with an aunt who has custody, then we're going to look for the aunt's information. Um, but if they're just staying with their aunt but their parent still has custody, then we want the parent's financial information. So to continue on with that, if a student's parents are separated or divorced, we still need the income from both parents for our purposes. So we ask that the students will add those two incomes together and put that information in. Um, for young scholars, it's weighted a little bit differently because they're still primarily in the home, whereas college scholarships, that is going to be the final income that we're going to look at, the income of the two family members. All that being said, if a student cannot find a second parent, they are incarcerated, they, we do, they don't know their whereabouts, um, there's a special waiver form that they can fill out. Same with the college scholarship. So we require the financial information. We get that from their CSS profile. And so part of the CSS profile is um, a waiver. And so we ask them to have that waiver filled out if they are unable to get information from their um, non-custodial parent. Hi, Joan. I have a question. So does that mean that um, in order for the students to qualify for the Jack Kent Cook scholarship, that students have to complete the CSS profile? No, that is not during the application process. That okay. is for students who have been identified as semifinalists. And even all semifinalists, we don't ask for their financial information. We only ask for a percentage of those students' financial information. So once a student becomes a semifinalist and we do a deeper dive into the financial review, we will reach out to a certain number of students and ask for them to um, add us on their CSS profile so that we can do that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I actually have one more question. For the conference weekend, is that something that they do every year where they see their cohort and the new students as well? Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's, it's for the um, scholars that were chosen that year, but there are opportunities for alumni to come. And to be honest, I'm not sure exactly how that all works, if all alumni are invited or or what, but when I went, this is my first year attending that event and you could tell the alumni that were there were there often <laughs> because everybody knew them. And um, so I'm not sure if it's open to them while they're still in college, but then once they're alumni, I believe that it is. Got it. And would the students, if they do get selected, do they have to pay for their transportation to the conference? Okay, no, great. No, Thank that's you. provided. Yeah, I get that question a lot. A lot of students are worried about that. No, we provide transportation for them for that event. And, you know, we're there. That was part of my role this year, hanging out at the airport, welcoming students, making sure they got on the right bus to get over to the conference center. So it's fun. Thank you. Any other questions? What is the total of applications you received this year? We do. I cannot share that number just because I don't know it right now off the top of my head, how many um, eligible applications we received. But um, 
we're still sort of identifying eligibility at this point, so I don't know the exact number. Last year we had um, 6,000 applications. So we received, I mean, 20,000 students started our application this year, which was jarring, <laughs> but they didn't <laughs> all, <laughs> they didn't all finish their application or submit their application and they weren't all eligible. So we don't have 20,000 applications this year, but that's how many people started the application this year, uh, which was like 550% higher than last year. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot to, it's been a lot to kind of sift through and make sure that um, everybody was eligible. That's why we don't have that number quite yet. Now, Joan, the, the 60 to 100 students, you know, I, I know it varies from year to year that mm -hmm. are chosen. Those students are separate from the middle school students that sort of feed into the pipeline of the scholarship as well. I don't know if we talked about that or not. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that's correct. So young scholars that complete the young scholars program when they are seniors, they will apply for the college scholarship program. They will have a letter of recommendation that's specifically from their educational advisor as part of their application, and they will be reviewed separately from our regular um, public applicants. <clears throat> so they are in a separate grouping. And you know when we're doing budgeting and all that, we're assuming all of those students will become college scholarship awardees as well. So when you start as a young scholar, if you fulfill the requirements and continue up with your studies and continue meeting with your um, educational advisor and, and all of that, then you are very, very likely to become a college scholar as well. And yes, that's correct. We have, so we'll have those 40 students um, who have applied separately, and then we'll take on 60 more college um, scholarship winners. That was my question. I wanted to know if they were minus from the group or added to the group. Yeah, added. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so I will move on to the last program that we have, uh, <clears throat> which is our undergraduate transfer scholarship. <clears throat> so this scholarship is open now. It's available to um, community college students who are transferring to a four-year institution. And they don't have to be current um, community college students. So if they recently graduated from community college with an associate's degree, they are um, welcome, since 2019, they are also welcome to apply. Other questions I get a lot about the scholarship, is there any age limit? No, um, if a student has gone back to college in their 30s or 40s and um, have not attended a four-year school in the past, they would be eligible for our scholarship. So it doesn't have to be, you know, in their, in their early 20s to apply. Um, this scholarship is also available on Common App, but Common App for transfer students is a completely different site. So um, once you go to Common App, it will ask you if you're a transfer student or a high school senior. And once they choose transfer scholarship, they um, transfer student, they will start that application process. And then our undergraduate transfer scholarship is available there. Let's see. <clears throat> so the program goals are similar to um, the other scholarships. Um, the program's experience is also very similar to the other scholarships. These students will also be eligible to apply for the graduate scholarship, um, like I mentioned, up to $150,000. Um, the support, the scholar support, they have a dean of scholar support, um, and that is an individual who is helping helping them um, with advising, conducting regular check-ins, making campus visits, helping navigate campus resources, helping connect with mentors, internships, and fellowship opportunities, and also helping to support students in the um, graduate school application process if that's something that they're interesting, interested in pursuing. 
Um, the active network, again, cannot be stressed enough. You know, being a scholar is being part of a community. Um, these students, when they become undergraduate transfer scholars, they also attend Scholars Weekend um, before they start at their four-year institution. And, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to connect with people who might be going to your school, who might be going to school just in your area. You know, maybe you're someone who lives in Florida and you're transferring to school in Boston and you know nobody and now you have, you know, somebody who, whether they're in the school or not, is still is in the same city. And that can be really, really beneficial for students. Um, the continued support, you know, not only being eligible for the graduate school, but also to be eligible for the network of Cook um, Scholar alumni. So a couple of weekends ago, we just had a staff meeting and it was highlighted that um, our staff had put together an event for students who, it was an alumni in a financial um, position and they set up an, an opportunity for current scholars and alum to come and not only see the office, which, you know, a, it was, I, I think it was in Boston. It was like, you know, on this 40th floor and it was like this beautiful space, you know, and some students just haven't ever had an opportunity to see what that would look like. Um, so not only to have that that beautiful space and to be part of something, but they also talk to students about, um, you know, what their career goals are. Some students said that, hey, you know, I thought I wanted to do this and now I have this finance degree and I don't want to do that. What are other opportunities for me? And so it was one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, asking those very specific questions of alumni and having this network of resources uh, to help these students um, in, in figuring out the um, not only the college process, but just as important, the after college process of, of what's next. What do I do next? Because that can be kind of daunting for, for college graduates. Um, that eligibility is the same in terms of the um, GPA must be 3.5 or above. They must be enrolling in a four-year institution in fall of 2024. They must have unmet financial need. Um, a couple of differences. One is um, they must have no previous enrollment um, for a semester or more at a four-year institution. So that includes um, both in the U.S. and outside of the U.S. So if they attended a four-year institution, they are not eligible. If they attended a four-year institution for three weeks and dropped out and didn't receive any credits, they would still be eligible. So it's all about whether they finished that semester or not. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, they have to have sophomore status by January 1st of 2024 at a two-year institution or be a recent graduate since spring of 2019. Um, so students, if they're unsure about their sophomore status, they would need to speak to their college. That's who's gonna let them know if they have sophomore status or not. Um, in terms of the financials, a lot of questions I receive from undergraduate transfer scholars is, I don't live with my parents anymore. My parents don't help me financially. I don't, I don't, I, I don't wanna provide their financial information. So for students who are 30 years old or younger, we still require their parents' financial information if it's possible to get. Again, they can fill out a waiver if it's unsafe for them to contact their parents, if they don't know the whereabouts of their parents in extenuating circumstances. But overall, we do want to find out the income of both their custodial and non-custodial parents, even if they're not living with their parents, even if they're independent, even if they file their taxes separately, we still need to know that financial information for ages 30 and younger. If they're over 30, we do not require that information. The selection criteria is the same. Um, academic achievement being weighed the heaviest. Um, so when we ask for a recommendation, you know, students at this point are working, um, but we really strongly recommend that they ask for their recommendations from professors because that ac academic achievement is weighed so heavily. Um, you know, students in community colleges tend for this scholarship tend to have the hardest time finding recommendation letters, um, professors that will recommend them. So we can be a little bit flexible um, in terms of that. We will accept a letter from um, an employer, but we just feel that the they have a better opportunity if they have a professor who makes that recommendation for them.
Um, again, it's in the Common App. Um, we, we require their college transcripts. That's something in the Common App. It's actually very easy. I love the Common App for transfer scholarship. Um, there is a place to upload their college transcripts. If they attended um, more than one community college, we do need all of their transcripts. Um, two recommendations from professors. Um, that section, they invite their recommenders to send a letter on their behalf. And then the recommenders are contacted by Common App and then send them to us through Common App. Um, but their college transcripts and a resume, we, we request to be uploaded on their application. So, um, you know, make sure that they're working on a resume if they don't have one already. Uh, we ask again for any activities and honors, family and household information, and then the three short response essays. And we ask about their college plans. These do not have to be set in stone. If they choose something right now and, you know, become a scholar, they're not set. We're, there's no, it's not binding. There's no binding um, with, with what they say their college plans are at this point. So um, I get a lot of questions about that as well. Um, so the scholarship for the undergraduate transfer opened in October. It closes January 11th, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. in a student's local time zone. Um, we like to say the semifinalists will be announced in February of 2024. Um, I'm guessing end of February, beginning of March, because February is a short month. <laughs> and then the recipients are announced in April of 2024. Um, so yeah, I'm going to open it up to questions. And in the meantime, I'm also going to pull up um, our website because I just want to take a second to um, talk to you guys about that because I think it's really helpful, um, but it can also be a little daunting um, to go through. So I'll, I'll do some questions right now for the undergraduate transfer and then we can go through the website. My question is, do you have a link for the application or do they have to go into the transfer um, common app? Is there a okay. link that I could, if I needed it to send to someone? Sure, let me actually, that transitions me to um, the website here. So this is the homepage of our website. And here under menu, if you go to the scholarships, it lists each one. So if you're in the undergraduate, there's this apply now button. You click on that, it will take you straight to the Common App. So you can send that to them. What they'll have to do is um, add our scholarship to the Common App. So you add it as though you're gonna add a college. So you'll just type in, you'll say add a school. You'll type in Jack Ken Cook Foundation Undergraduate Transfer Scholarship. It will come up, you'll add it as one of your schools, and that's where the application resides. And Joan, we have a question in the chat um, from Ms. Alvelo. So do you, you want to unmute? You want me to read it? Yeah, I see it. Um, so we're talking about even if students have their own children, do they have to provide their parents information? And the answer is yes. If they are 30 years old or younger, they still do have to provide their parents information. Thank you. And we'll also be asking them about their information. If they have a spouse, we, we want to know everybody's financial information. Um, okay. So going back to the website, like I said, if you click here, all of our scholarships are listed. So starting here with the Young Scholars Program, um, it gives a little bit of an overview, but if you click in here, this how to apply, it will give you a lot of information down here below. So here we have um, our a flyer for our Young Scholars Program. Um, it looks like it hasn't been updated yet because the application isn't open yet, um, but this will be updated. And then it's in a lot of different languages here. So we try to have an opportunity for a lot of different languages. There's also a webinar in English and in Spanish. 
and a panel with current scholars that can be reviewed. That's a YouTube video that you can click on and find out more information or send that to anybody who you think might be interested. Who to apply talks about, uh, or who can apply gives the eligibility, the timeline here, um, and then when to apply. And, and here where it says notify me, that's where it'll say apply now when it's open. So you'll just click right here. And then there's these frequently asked questions. You just drop down and it talks a lot about um, any questions that a student might have about the application. Um, this It's the same layout for the other scholarships um, where you know the first page is a little bit of information, but once you start clicking into here, it will give you a lot of resources. Um, a, a, another webinar, these outreach slides I just pre presented in English and Spanish, and then the program flyer. So that's updated every year with the new dates. Um, there's a little video here. Here it talks about what to submit. So it gives a detail um, of, of all of those items. We don't have as many um, different languages for um, the college scholarship or the undergraduate scholarship, more for just the um, young scholars. But again, here's the um, frequently asked questions, which I highly recommend um, for students. There's some information for counselors and educators, a sample application, outreach slides, if anybody wanted to present about this to a smaller group um, and wanted that information. Um, and then same thing here for the undergraduate transfer scholarship. Um, for I, the community, um, undergraduate community college, or sorry, the undergraduate transfer scholarship also has um, students can have a campus representative. So not all campuses have one, but if um, you know somebody who might be interested in being a campus representative, that is usually, that is an employee of the community college and they have access to the applications and who's applying at their school. And it does help for students who are applying to have somebody um, at their school that they can work with. Well, this is great information. We have about 10 minutes left and three questions. Um, okay. I'm gonna go to the chat quickly first. Um, Adriana, you had a question. Did you wanna unmute or do you want me to read that for you? Um, yeah, I just wanted to know for the high school and the undergraduate transfer applications, could students be undocumented to qualify? as um, they're able to for the middle school one. Yes, that's correct. All undocumented students are welcome to apply. For the undergraduate transfer scholarships, we tend to have a lot of international students who apply and they're welcome to apply because there's not a lot of opportunities for them for financial aid. So international students are also welcome to apply as long as they have attended community college in the US and are currently living in the United States but there's no documentation required. The undergraduate transfer scholarship is a little confusing for students because it asks for a green card, but that's the common application and not our application that asks mm -hmm. that. Ms. Um, Morris, I see your hand. Yes, um, we have a lot of dual enrolled students. Um, our high school students now are taking college classes. So if they are, if they graduate with um, their their AA and their diploma, which application would you suggest them to apply to? That's a great question. Um, we always encourage the high school students, even the ones that are dual enrolled to apply to the college scholarship program because that is, um, you know, because they're first time college students and that's what that's more designed for. That's perfect. She took our final poll question, but that's okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was a great. Question. That was a great question. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Shayla, you have a question. Yes, I was wondering if, if there's a possibility of um, linking like a, a previous student with an uh, a student a new student that's applying. If you have any opportunity in the foundation for like assigning a mentor to possibly like, let's say one of my students is interested, but honestly, I really am not allowed to help with that process. Mm -hmm. uh, in that detail, I could tell them the link, but I can't help really help them. So I was wondering if that there's an opportunity for mentoring. We do not have an opportunity for mentoring. Okay. 
No, the process is very similar to other college scholarship applications. Um, so the information that we're asking, that's why we have it on Common App because they're so mm -hmm. similar to other college applications. So if they have somebody who can help them with a college application um, process. And we do have some resources about, you know, sometimes we'll send an email about what makes a great essay or things like that, that we try to help encourage them, students who have started and not yet completed their application. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then do you all typically get um, a large pool of students from the Baltimore area or do you tend to get a pool of students from sort of typical areas that already are familiar with Jack Can't Cook? What does that typically look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> I can, pro I can um, pull up, I believe we had those kind of like stats on the website in the flyer. Let me just- Oh, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> cause I definitely don't know them off the top of my head, <laughs> but let's see for last year's scholarship. Um, I guess it really just says that the community types, it breaks it out by community types. So 15 were percent was in a rural area, 32 in a suburban area and 53% in a, in a um, urban area. Um, so it doesn't really specifically say, but on our website under, um, news and, stories, there mm -hmm. are um, press releases about the different um, scholars. So when we announce scholars, mm -hmm. we'll put out a press release and it will give details about um, the scholars that have been awarded scholarships. So I'll put one in the chat here. So, you know, this is for undergraduate transfer scholarships. So we had um, this past year, Howard Community College, Montgomery Community College, Community nice. College of Baltimore, and another Montgomery College. Nice, interesting. We'll put that in the chat. This is last year's undergraduate, and then I'll do the same for the college scholarship for last year. Perfect, that's awesome. There may be your mentor right there, Shayla. Yeah, actually, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Mm -hmm. This is why I do this. Great, so if there are no final questions, I am going to stop the recording, but if folks wanna stay on just to get some final pieces of information, that would be great. Uh, please fill out our survey so that we can um, give you the best possible offerings we can give you throughout the year. I do have one shameless plug before we leave. We have our uh, college accelerator program. So if you have any current college students that are needing information about branding, we have an accelerator program coming up. I'm going to share my screen briefly if you give me one second, and I will also put the link in the chat. So if you know any current college students, we have our College Bound Foundation Accelerator Series. Please share the link with them so they can definitely go on and uh, get information. We have a lovely group of folks hosting coming up that will give you more information um, about branding in general and uh, for college students. Um, this is a great opportunity for students who are probably just getting their sea legs under them to figure out how to present themselves. So we're looking for students that are college, uh, currently current college students to come join us in our College Bound Foundation uh, Accelerator Series. This is great information, not just for college students really, but for anybody who's interested. Um, I have that in the chat. Uh, thank you so much and I will stop um, recording now. Thank you, Joan. Thanks for having me.